Andy Johnson, we are looking at some basics in educational research, correlational, causal comparative, and quasi-experimental research, not as complicated as it might seem. But first of all, qualitative research, as differentiated from quantitative research, does not try to manipulate reality, does not use numerical data necessarily, but a qualitative research takes reality as it is. And I use the analogy of Jane Goodall looking at a bunch of gorillas or monkeys, whatever. She's observing. She's looking for patterns. She's looking to notice things. She uses inductive analysis to see the patterns emerging from the data. In the classroom, that's what a good qualitative researcher does, uses survey data, observational data, anecdotal records, other things to observe reality it does not try to have control in experimental groups or isolate variables. The goal is not, not to generalize to larger populations based on a smaller sample size, but to see, to understand, to make connections. And some of our greatest educational theories, Piaget, Vygotsky and others are based on qualitative research. But quantitative research is based on the collection and analysis of numerical data. Data, And there are three common quantitative research designs, and we're going to look at each one of these. So let us start with correlational research seeks to determine whether and to what degree a statistical relationship exists between two or more variables. Now, this primarily describes existing conditions, something that occurred in the past, wants to determine if there is a relationship between these two things. For example, the correlationship between two variables, the amount of independent reading students do, is highly correlated, there's a co-relationship, with uh, scores on a reading achievement test. As one of these goes up, so does the other. If minutes read per day goes down, so does the other. There's a high co-relationship between those, these two variables. And this is described using a correlational coefficient which describes the degree or strength of our particular, particular relationship, the correlation, co correlation coefficient. Again, as the number of minutes read per day goes up, so does the percentile rank, right? But what, is, and let's say positive correlation, meaning as one goes up, so does the other, negative correlation as one goes down, the other one decreases. However, we cannot say that minutes of reading caused achievement test scores to go up or achievement test scores cause minutes of reading. We cannot say that one is the cause of the other, just there is a strong degree of relationship between the two. Positive relation, again, when one variable increases, like the number of minutes read, so does scores. When one variable increases, the other decreases. For example, number of minutes watching TV goes up. We might assume that GPAs or other scores go down. To give you a sense of thing, but here's the thing. Number of minutes watching TV goes up. GPA scores go down. We cannot say that watching TV causes the other to go down. However, they are highly correlated. There's a co-relationship. A perfect, a perfect co-relationship of one means there is a perfect one-to-one -one correlation. When one goes up, this is perfect. The other goes up. Perfect negative. When one goes up, the other goes down. And zero correlation. There's absolutely no relationship between the two. And perfect negative or positive very rarely happens. Making predictions, correlation coefficient, identified by that symbol right there. When the correlation is 0 to 0.35, 
the relationship is non-existent or very low. Correlation, 0.35, slight relationship. 0.65 day strong relationship and correlation coefficient of 0.86 shows there is a very strong relationship between the two. We cannot say that one causes the other all the time. Cigarette consumption in men and lung consumption, very strong correlation. We cannot say that this always causes that, but there is a very strong correlation. Some people smoke for years and don't get lung cancer. A misuse, and you've heard the phrase, and I'll say it again, correlation does not indicate or confer causation. Just because two variables are related, we cannot say that one causes the other. In the example above, we cannot say with absolute certainty that lots of reading causes test scores to increase, although we may suspect as much. And likewise, we cannot say that standardized achievement tests cause reading to increase, but we can say the two seem to appear together. In a true experiment, we would then use this correlation uh, coefficient with this correlation to isolate variables with controlled ex uh, experimental research to see if indeed the amount of reading caused reading scores to go up. However, since we know reading is a very important thing, it would be unethical to withhold reading from uh, one group of popula one population or group. So that's why we often, the ethics involved, we know that reading is important, so we would not do a controlled experiment to do that. Another example of a misuse of correlational research. Yes, water temperature is related to drowning. There is a very strong correlation there. When the water temperature goes up, the number of people drowned go up. We cannot say that water temperature causes drowning because when it's cold, fewer people are in the water. And when it's really cold, there's ice. That's a misuse, and that's often done, by the way. You know, rock music causes this or that because there's more rock music, there's more this and that, the other happened. That's correlation. We cannot say that rock music causes something to happen. The same way with band books and a whole bunch of stuff, video games. We can say there's a correlation between video games and violence, but we cannot say that one causes the other. Correlation does not infer causation. Phonemic awareness is a good one. There's a strong correlation between phonemic awareness, the ability to hear sounds within words, and reading achievement in first and second grade. Some people misuse that and saying, oh, phonemic awareness causes reading achievement. Phonemic awareness is the causal factor of reading scores to go up. That is a misuse because in kindergarten, students who score highly on phonemic awareness, hearing sounds within words, that is an effect of interaction with books at home and words at home. So it's the interaction and experience with books, preschool and kindergarten, the effect is stronger phonemic awareness, but it's the interaction with books that causes or is a strong link between that reading achievement and first grade. So with correlational research, it is often hard to isolate the variables. All right, causal comparative research used to find the reason for existing differences between two or more groups, used to find a, a measure, used when random assignment cannot be met. Remember, a true experiment is random assignment to groups and most classrooms and schools, you do not have random assignment. So like correlational research is used to describe an existing situation, then looks at the conditions that have already occurred. It collects data to investigate why one group is different from another. For example, the effectiveness of a new math program. Math scores 
were uh, compared at several different schools with a new program. A principal wanted to find the best math program. So he looked at the math scores of several different programs using causal comparative research to see if these math scores that use this program, the schools that use this program, if their math scores were better. This is an example of causal comparative research. If the schools using the new math program demonstrated higher test scores and the differences were statistically significant, that means greater than could happen by chance, you might assume that that new math program might be more effective. However, one of the things when you do that sort of thing, we don't know if the groups were comparable in the first place. Could be that the schools that used, that bought this new math program, that the students were slightly ahead in the first place. So we always have to use causal comparative research with a grain of salt. My favorite one is whole language in California. Oh, years ago, there was an increase in whole language and the scores went down, although they actually didn't. So, so people got on the bandwagon and they got all whooped up in 1996, they said that whole language was causing all these scores to go down. They wanted schools to abandon whole language. They say, see, since we started whole language, look at all these scores going down. However, causal comparative research was used to parse out three different groups and make comparisons. The groups consisted of fourth grade students scores in reading whose classrooms identified themselves primarily as phonics based, whole language based, and literature based. That was the independent variable, the approach. The dependent variable would be the scores on the NAEP reading test scores. The results are shown here. There was a difference in the groups favoring both teachers who identified their approach as literature based and whole language. It was statistically significant, but it didn't score in favor of the phonics group. It scored in favor of these two groups. However, we must again be careful in how we interpret these results. This was not a true experiment in that random selection of participants in the groups was not used. There were many variables called confounding variables that could have accounted for the difference in scores here. For example, we have no way of knowing if the initial scores of students in each group were equal or if the sample size of classroom teachers was representative of the entire population. The differences in scores could be a result of teachers versus approaches. That is, it may be that more effective teachers tend to use more newer approaches, such as whole language, while less effective teachers tend to use more traditional approaches here. So we do not know. As you can see, when reading research uh, reports, you always have to go beyond the report and look for confounding variables. What this report does not conclude is that there's no evidence to support the notion that whole language causes reading test scores to decrease. However, there may be a link between literature-based and whole language instruction and positive performance on standardized tests. So these people that get on the internet and say, it's been proven, whole language is ineffective. I always say, okay, it's been proven, show me the research and I'll analyze it. I always say, show me the research. and people usually quiet down there. All right, the third one is quasi-experimental research. This is when there is no random assignment to groups. This is the closest we get to a true experiment. Random selection to groups ensures that the groups being compared are relatively similar. You're not comparing apples to oranges. And as stated earlier, that in most schools and classrooms, random selection is not possible. However, there are two ways to ensure comparison groups are relatively similar, pretest and matching. Again, this is a classic science uh, experimental method. A measure, two groups, a measure. The groups are the same in every way except for the treatment. So you have to make sure these two groups are actually the same. That's one of the purposes of this. But Two ways to do it is pretest and measure. The first one is pretest. 
to compare groups before an investigation. You simply give a test on the variables you're looking to examine. If they're relatively similar, you can continue the experiment. However, if there's significant differences between the groups, you've got three options. You can find another group to compare, reconfigure your groups so that they match, or take the dissimilarity of groups into account when describing findings and conclusions. Single subject design, you don't have to do that, of course, because you're looking at just one group. But this is a little bit more tricky in the statistical analysis. The other way is called matching to create relatively similar groups. Pretest is given to the entire population based on the variable that you're looking for. And based on that, you take similar students who are matched, you put one in this group and one in that, one in this group and one in that. So you create relatively similar groups. You take a high score here, high score there, medium score, medium score, and put them into different groups to ensure based on that pretest that the groups are relatively similar. All right, we've looked at just some of the basics, correlational, causal comparative, and quasi-experimental research. Always go beyond the research to see what confounding variables there might be. Correlation does not infer causation.